what is worse than your light stops working? Yeah, of course, if two of them fails, that's even worse. I have a total of uh, 10 of these uh, fluorescent lamps in my garage and uh, they're only two years old and two of them has already failed. So I'm afraid that more of them will fail uh, as time passes by. I've already tried to replace the light tubes. That didn't help. So the problem is uh, this one. Okay, so I moved up to my workshop and uh, I took apart the inside of the lamp and I suspect this uh, electronics part is uh, broken. So my idea here is to remove these uh, holders for the tubes, light tubes. It was uh, type T554 watts. And uh, then I have bought some LED strips. I have actually three different types. This one, I think it's the blue one. So the idea here is to have a, a white, yellow and a blue strip. And this will give a better color accuracy when I'm doing recording. Uh, this is something uh, DIY Perks uh, learned me uh, watching his videos, highly recommended. So I will try to see if that works. I have also bought some uh, LED drivers. So this one will be powering uh, the LED strips. I gotta remove this one, remove the wiring, remove this uh, brackets at the end here. And then uh, glue on. Uh, it's double-sided tape of course on the lead strips. So I will have uh, at least three of them, maybe four. I have to measure the lights they output. Maybe I will have two bright white on the uh, outer side and then one yellow and one blue in the middle. And together maybe this will be a nice bright white light in total. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I also need some other mounting mechanism because uh, the original one has these big holes here and uh, my uh, lead strip will cover these holes. So I need some other way of uh, mounting this when this goes up into the light fixture. So, okay, I will try to do some uh, testing first, see how it works uh, without gluing them on trying to do some soldering and just uh, cut this in uh, appropriate length, power them on, see how the light will uh, look like. Okay, so... Uh... The next task is then to test the LED strips. I will uh, attach one of the LED strips to one driver and try to attach two LED strips to the second driver. Not sure if it's uh, powerful enough to run two LED strips, but I guess it's uh, one way to figure it out. Test it. Thank you. 
Excellent! Everything works perfectly. Or does it? No. Two of the LED strips connected to one LED driver is not working as intended. It starts to flicker and that's a sign that the LED driver is not powerful enough to run two LED strips. I decided to measure the power consumption per LED strip. The bright white took 1.6 almost, it was the most power hungry one. The yellow one 1.4 and the blue one almost 1 amperage. Then it's just to multiply this with 12 volts and you get the watts you need from the LED drivers. Okay, this uh, didn't go quite as I expected it. It uh, pulled a lot more power than I expected. So my power supply that I bought, it's not big enough. Yeah, what I've done now is that I have temporarily used the tape to uh, mount them on the back plate and I have uh, put on the power supplies that I had and I have found a third one that's not really a lead driver, it's just a regular power supply, So, but it did work. So I used that for the blue one. So here is the blue light. And then I can plug in the next one. And I think this is the yellow white. And then I have the third one. That should, no, that is the yellow one. So here you have the all of the three LED strips. It's quite bright. I, I can feel it's uh, really filling all this room with light. So I think maybe this is uh, powerful enough. But uh, what I will do now is uh, take this down to the garage. Try to just hold it up. Uh, maybe try to put it into the fixture and see how it looks like with the cover on. Of course with all the cables and stuff all of this is just temporary. So I, I don't want to glue stuff together here and mount and drill holes and if and maybe I'm, I'm really not satisfied with it. So okay let's uh, try it down in the garage. Wow! No I can't actually see anything here I'm just seeing stripes here. Okay, let's go down. This should give some kind of impression how it's going to work. I just, I just need to connect this. And this one fell off. I think I'll just start on it. I more or less know that it works, but uh, is it bright enough? Or is it too bright? I'll move over to the end of the garage here to a power outlet and let's plug it in. One, two and three. Wow. Okay. Haha. <laughs> Quite strange. Uh, <laughs> I should have some diffusion because uh, it's more or less uh, showing all the individual uh, LEDs through the glass. But it's uh, the, the power, I think this is good enough compared to the others. I can try to unplug it and uh, plug it in again. So let's see how much it affects the total light on the floor. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. Yes, it does help. It seems to work. Okay, I'm back. Uh, it's been a couple of days. It's uh, exactly one haircut since I uh, was here last time. And um, I bought some new power adapters, some LED drivers. 
These are 36 watts, so I hope these are good enough to power two of the LED strips. So then I can use this uh, small one for one of the LED strips and then I use one LED driver for the others. So let's unbox this and see how it looks like. I'll put a link in the description. I don't know what uh, equipment I'm using. These are a bit uh, longer in size and they are quite slim and they are even uh, uh, like water resistant. So they, looks, uh, they look like this, so they are longer. And it says here 36 watts, waterproof, IP67 rated, seems nice. And they have these uh, cords on them. So uh, I will uh, do some uh, drilling, try to mount them on the back plate and then try to glue on the ledge strips. I have made these adapters so they fit now underneath these uh, holes so I can um, Put one of the lead strips in the in the, on the center, and then I have screws on the sides to mount the back plate to the fixture, and then I have two lead strips on the outer side. So I hope that will work. So then it's time to do the soldering, the mounting of the drivers. I didn't really like this being pre-mounted these cables, it would be better actually if I could uh, have them just uh, with the possibility to just mount them myself, but if maybe the wires are long enough. So let's see how that goes. These Vega connectors are just great. Well, it's time to put the inner part into the light fixture and then connect it to the garage main power. I turned off the fuse to not get electrocuted while attaching it to the main power. Then I just checked that everything worked and it did. I decided to turn off the lights uh, to not get completely blinded while attaching the inner part to my new brackets with four screws and finally the first light is converted to LED and here you can see the final result and then it's just doing all of this one more time for the other light. Hi there! Oh, spooky! Are you ready for the big reveal? I have now put up the second light. Let's see if it works. One, two, three. Yeah! Of course, I knew it worked. I wanted to test it out. So, this is the second LED 
lights. This was the first one, working perfectly. I feel it's a bit, uh, a bit brighter, a bit clearer, more like natural light, so I'm really happy with them. The old fluorescent lights are a bit more mushy, yellowish in the color, so I think this uh, brightens up the room so it's more like daylight uh, feeling in here. Sometime in the future I hope to be able to replace all of them, but I will probably replace them as they stop working. I can see it's not optimal to record filming straight up to the lights. Some flaring, almost like special effects. Anyway, I'm finally done with my lights in the garage, so then I can start with other projects, uh, like continue on my bike. But it's always nice to fix stuff as they uh, stop working. So, really happy with this one, and uh, yeah. I was really satisfied at this point, but I soon realized that I had a big problem. Combining lights with very different color temperatures made it just impossible for me to get the white balance correct when I tried video recording or when taking pictures. Here I have two pictures of my grey plastic uh, dustpan placed directly under the new LED lights. I guess you can see the problem. Here it is placed under consistent light where the wall in the background is lit by the same light as the dustpan. These pictures was shot very close to the light source. Moving further away from the lights make them blend and the problem is not that visible, but the problem still occurs. Here you can see the walls get yellow to get accurate colors on the bike, or the bike gets a blue tint if the walls in the background controls the white balance. I had to fix this of course, and it was pretty simple. I'm now able to get better pictures than ever before, where the colors are accurate and they really pops. Stay tuned for my next video where I will tell you what I did to accomplish this.